Good morning, folks. Regarding the filament snap and incoming CME, if indeed this eruption is to impact Earth, it would be today or tomorrow, and likely just be a minor to moderate impact at most. Meanwhile, last night we had another Earth-facing eruption. This one came from a tiny filament that was able to stay still as the fields broke launching some solar plasma into space. The erupting filament may have been small, but the ejecta might have been bigger. A solar tsunami was left in the wake of the release as particles began repopulating the fields. Whether this will impact Earth is less of a question than will we notice. You should see a tiny cloud emanating from the sun with effects in nearly every direction. The placement and clouds suggest an Earth impact, but it's also so small we might not even notice it. Of course, we expect more and more eruptions as the Mercury-Sun conjunction comes into play here soon. Thus far, it's filaments instead of flares. But that could change with complexing events in the spots. Up north, we see a central north-south bar of tiny umbras, and that bar itself is beta class. Interaction potential going forward. Down south, we actually have a genuine gamma class as the blue positive umbras are split up here. Also could go delta if it interacts. Looking at the influx, we are seeing slight upticks in cosmic ray intensity, just as we see a bit of a drop-off in the solar wind. This calming is creating smooth readings and even the sensitive flux, and Earth's magnetic shield is cool as a cucumber. Coming back to the planets, we've actually got Uranus conjoining the Sun as well, and that four-way interaction between Earth and those three is a significant alignment for seismicity, even without major coronal holes. In fact, the next ones will I are just coming over the limb now, over on the left side, still a few days away. Even still, the quake of the day had to be majorly downgraded by the USGS to stay out of six range. They went with the lowest of all the readings for this one. We've got a solar polar fields update, folks, and this is pretty much it as the north jumps further into positive. We can say that this polar cycle is over. Remember that the flip and cycle change of the polar cycle is like a sine wave to the sunspot cycle's cosine. The sun's poles have flipped. The story today is radiation. Fukushima poison has been detected at the Vancouver coastlines. More details as they emerge. We are also seeing above average readings across Serbia. Not quite at scary levels yet, but interestingly, they're blaming cosmic rays. Lastly, we had a Cobalt-60 canister go missing in Vietnam. Not exactly what you want to be sprinkling on your salad. Remnants. We had two West Pacific storms, but they are now fading away. Replaced by twins in the Indian Ocean that will go opposite directions now, leaving one of them with Perth in the crosshairs. Eyes open. Until then, it is still the convergence lines between nations and the low-pressure node just offshore of Perth already. Those areas will take the top alerts tonight. In the United States, a convergence line will feed off the Gulf moisture and heat running up the central states, which is also met by dry electric air from the desert. West Coast with a different story as the winds make a major shift. This will leave us with thunderstorm potential up the center and along the convergence line tonight, while cold comes into play out west and we will see widespread rain and snow for this area. Lastly, we've got the same three concerns in Europe, two lows churning, while a high pressure node up north still is funneling a cloud line right over at Norway. Kind of a boring few days here if I can be honest. We've got your current conditions and a little viewer challenge in your shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.